pledge? I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <coughs> We have minutes to approve. Oh, and we have a proclamation before that. I think the minutes are second. Can you approve the minutes first, Mr. Commissioner? Okay. We'll go ahead and approve the minutes. Do so I have a motion to approve the minutes of February 26th and 28th? So moved. I'll second the motion. Mr. Painter? Yes. Mr. Ubel? Mr. Humphrey? Aye. We have a proclamation designating Spring Severe Weather Awareness Week as if we're not already aware. <laughs> Would you present I, that? I sure will. Who are we presenting to? Pam. Pam. Morning. Who has had sleepless nights, I'm sure, from <laughs> the severe weather we've already seen. As Commissioner Humphrey uh, mentioned, we have had our, our measure of severe weather. You know, it's not every year that uh, you enter into a flood season and then have a corresponding tornado on top of it. That was, uh, that was uh, quite a two-week period. Um, you know, one of the great things that came out of the whole thing was there was no injuries. You know, there were no injuries from the flood and there was no injury from the corresponding tornado. Um, to all those first responders and people who help with those two tragedies, uh, our thanks goes out to you. Uh, we're so glad that, uh, that the impact was as minimal as it was. And that's not to say that those families who've been impacted, that any impact to them was minimal at all. I don't mean that. We're, we're just glad that the, uh, we're on the recovery side and, and things are looking up. <coughs> Proclamation this morning, Spring Severe Weather Awareness Week in Claremont County, March 18th through 24th, 2018. Whereas Claremont County residents face a yearly threat of spring storms that include severe thunderstorms, high winds, floodings, flash flooding, and tornadoes. Whereas it is incumbent upon government at all levels to promote effective emergency preparedness and management practices that will better protect the lives and the property of their citizens. <clears throat> and whereas the Ohio Committee for Severe Weather Awareness is committed to educating the public on the methods of preparedness and the response to the natural hazard, the natural hazards that affect Ohio. And whereas Ohio's news media, state and local governments have the ability to work together to inform the public about severe weather safety, and whereas these joint educational campaigns have proven effective in educating citizens of Ohio about the actions that they can take to prepare, prepare for and respond to spring severe weather events. Now, therefore, let it be proclaimed that we, the Board of Claremont County Commissioners, do hereby proclaim the week of March 18th through 24th, 18th as Spring Severe Weather Awareness Week in Claremont County in honor and recognition of our citizens and the vital contribution that they make to the safety and well-being of our community. And it's signed by Edwin Humphrey, President, David Painter, Vice President, and David Ubel, Member. Pam, on behalf of the Claremont County Board of Commissioners, I bestow this certificate on you. Thanks for all your help during the flood and the corresponding tornado. You got it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you gonna say anything? Say yep, yep. So I'll just give a brief update on where we're at with the response to the flood and the tornado. So we are currently in the process of transitioning from a government-driven recovery effort into a community-driven recovery effort. So we're mobilizing our faith-based nonprofit partners to come in and address the unmet needs of the residents, um, what they might need to repair, rehab their property um, so that they can continue um, on their recovery effort. So at this point, um, if anyone is interested in donating, Donations can still be accepted at the Salvation Army at any one of their six drop-off locations. Um, they're currently accepting clothing, non-perishable goods, and cleaning supplies, and then cash donations as well. Um, cash donations can be um, distributed or directed to any reputable disaster relief organization or faith-based partner that's working in the, on the long-term recovery effort. But we also have a bank account set up at the Park National Bank through the Ohio Valley Long-Term Recovery Committee. And what that is, is we will be establishing a long-term recovery committee and those funds 
will go back to those residents that have been impacted, so 100% of those proceeds. So if you're not sure who to donate to, that is a great way to make sure that it comes back to our residents that have been affected. Again, that's at any Park National Bank, and it's the Ohio Valley Long-Term Recovery Committee. Um, if people are interested in volunteering, um, we have taken names through our hotline, um, and we will be passing that off to our faith-based partners. But moving forward, if anyone would like to volunteer, and that could be individuals or groups, they can contact the Salvation Army at 513-762-5641, and they will um, plug you in. Um, granted, you know, we may not have long-term needs for volunteers in Claremont County, but we do have um, residents that have been affected in Brown County as well as Hamilton County and Northern Kentucky and Indiana. So there's lots of opportunities to um, volunteer to help with the long-term recovery effort. Um, the Department of Job and Family Services has a limited amount of financial assistance, so all of that information will be on our website as well as I'm sure it's on the Department of Job and Family Services website. And what that is is a limited amount of financial assistance available to low-income, elderly, and disabled flood victims through the Claremont County Job and Family Services. So if you have questions, um, you can reach out to us or reach out to the Department of Job and Family Services for more information. And again, all of that will be placed on our website. Um, I believe that's it for now. We continue to do cleanup. We had a town hall meeting on Monday to address any unmet needs from the um, public. Um, and if you have needs that are not being met, um, again, they can always contact our office at 513-732-7661, and we can connect those residents with the appropriate social service agency or county agency that might be able to address their needs moving forward. Again, as we have discussed, uh, March is um, Severe Weather Awareness Month, so we will be advocating and doing some preparedness outreach as well. Again, if we can get residents, businesses, government agencies to be better prepared, it takes the burden off of our public safety agencies and our response um, to respond to those calls should we have another round of severe weather. Um, so again, making a kit, having a disaster plan, and just getting involved and understanding what hazards might affect your community and your family um, so that you can be better prepared should it occur. So again, I appreciate everyone's support. Thank you, um, Madam Commissioners, for everything you guys have done and all of the agencies that have participated um, to help us respond to and recover from both the flood and the tornado. <coughs> so, thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Consent agenda has been prepared and sent out to us on Friday. We've had a chance to look it over. If there's nothing that needs to be pulled for further discussion, I'd entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda as prepared. So moved. Second. Mr. Gubel? Yes. Mr. Painter? Yes. Mr. Humphrey? Aye. The non-consent agenda begins on page six with item 10. And that's a resolution 32-18 to pay our bills in the amount of $1,267,292.50. Uh, Do we have a motion to pay our bills with resolution 32-18? So moved. I'll second the motion. Mr. Painter? Yes. Mr. Hubel? Yes. Mr. Humphrey? Aye. <coughs> Mr. Bloom? Good morning. Good morning. I'm Lyle Bloom, director with the Claremont County Water Resources Department. 
Item number 11 is a recommendation to adopt a revised table of organization for the Claremont County Water Resources Department. This will eliminate one vacant position of Executive Assistant 1, classification number 79124, pay range 15, within the Water Division of the Claremont County Water Resources Department, as outlined in Exhibit A, and this will be effective November 16th, 2017. So this will, will realize a, an annual savings with uh, Sour and fringes by eliminating this position of about $58,600. Okay, do we have a motion to adopt the revised table of organization as contained in item 11? So moved. I'll second the motion. Mr. Painter? Yes. Mr. Hubel? Yes. Shumford? Aye. Item 12. Mr. Lamping? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Carl Lamping, Director of the Claremont County Building Department. Um, item number 12 is my recommendation with the occurrence of Thomas J. Igo County Administrator to adopt a revised table of organization for the Claremont County Building Department to, number one, delete the position of Administrative Support Coordinator, classification number 19143, pay range 12, and number two, add a position of Executive Assistant 1, classification number 79124, pay range 15, as outlined in Exhibit A, attached there too, and made a part thereof, and this would be effective uh, 3718. Okay, do we have a motion to adopt the table, the revised table of organization is contained in item 12? So moved. Second. Mr. Yubel? Yes. Mr. Painter? Yes. Mr. Humphrey? Aye. Thank you. Item 13, Judy Eshman. <coughs> Director of Job and Family Services. <coughs> Item 13 is my recommendation with the concurrence of Thomas J. Igo, County Administrator, to approve an amendment to the Claremont County Prevention, Retention, and Contingency PRC plan, previously ratified by the Board of County Commissioners on October 15, 1997, and subsequently amended 31 times as listed in the agenda, to include modifications to the PRC plan, to add language rel relative to disaster assistance for adult non-TANF individuals through emergency declaration by the Governor of Ohio or the Ohio Department of Job and Family Services as outlined therein and with said modifications to the prevention, retention and contingency PRC plan to be effective 22618. Thanks for not reading the 31 days. <laughs> just, just for those in attendance, could you just describe to them what non-TANF is? The, um, the declaration allowed us to provide assistance to two groups of individuals. One was um, families that were TANF eligible, meaning they were low-income families whose income was less than 200% of the poverty level. Non-TANF individuals were single adults or childless couples 55 years and older or disabled receiving a disability payment who also were low income with income less than 200 percent of poverty thank you you're welcome thank you we have a motion to approve the amendment to the claremont county prevention retention and contingency plan prc as described in item 13. so moved i'll second the motion mr painter yes mr Ubel? yes Mr. Humphrey. Aye. Judy again. Okay. Item 14 again is my recommendation with the concurrence of Thomas J. Igle, County Administrator, to adopt resolution 033-18 resolving to authorize the Auditor of Claremont County, Ohio to issue and release checks up to the maximum amount of $1,500 pursuant to the guidelines set forth under the special project funding for those Claremont County, Ohio residents affected by the severe weather and flood of February 2018 for a period not to exceed 60 days without prior approval by the Board of County Commissioners of Claremont County, Ohio. Okay. And this really is just so that the auditor can, as we people come in and say, I have a need and we want to be able to provide that, they can get their monies the next day because obviously if you were impacted by the flood, you're in an emergency situation. So these would be monies that have already been approved, not above and beyond what they normally would receive, correct? Exactly. These are actually the flood disaster monies that the governor gave Claremont County. Okay. And there would be somebody signed by your department to... Yes, we would authorize party. the monies. Yep. Do we have a motion to adopt resolution 33-18 as contained in item 14? So moved. Second. Mr. Hubel? 
Yes. Mr. Pena? Yes. Mr. Humphrey? Aye. Thank you. Andy Kuchta. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Andy Kuchta, this is a recommendation to appoint two people to the Claremont County Planning Commission. Dwayne Boso of Batavia, Ohio, and Amy Brewer of Milford, Ohio. Both have the terms of 331.18 to 330.21. Okay, do we have a motion to appoint those two members to Seven. the Planning Commission? I'll second the motion. Mr. Painter? Yes. Mr. Ubel? Yes. Mr. Humphrey? Aye. Item 16. <coughs> Item 16 is a recommendation to execute a property damage release form, and this is for claim number 174849842 from Progressive Insurance in the amount of $25,000 as it relates to an accident that the Claremont County Water Resources uh, vehicle had with a, uh, another vehicle here on State Route 222 back in September of last year. The $25,000 settlement is the max that the insurance is covering. It was not our fault, the accident, um, and the coverage was limited to state minimum, which is $25,000. So we need this form executed in order to get that $25,000 reimbursement. The total out-of-pocket of the water resources is just under forty, just under $50,000. That yeah, was an unfortunate situation. It was. It was. We have a motion to execute the property damage release form as contained in item 16. Second. Second. Mr. Ubel? Yes. Mr. Painter? Yes. Mr. Humphrey? Aye. Mr. Sander? Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. Bob Sander, Human Resources. Item 7 is a recommendation to amend Appendix 4.09 of the Claremont County Policy and Procedure Manual with respect to the Claremont County Classification Plan to amend the pay range of the classification title assistant county administrator, class number 89410, from pay range F to pay range I, as listed in Exhibit A, affected upon um, approval and further to authorize the update of the appropriate internet links position description uh, in Exhibit B and appendices accordingly. We have a motion to amend the Claremont County Personal Policy and Procedural Manual, manual as described. So moved. I'll second the motion. Mr. Painter? Yes. Mr. Ubel? Yes. Mr. Humphrey? Aye. <coughs> Thank you. Item 18. Suki again. Item 18 is our supplemental appropriations this week. First, we have in the Building Inspection Department regular salary, $4,653. This is for a vacation payout of a retired employee. Um, then we have an overtime for building inspection, $4,479. This was their overtime related to the flood and the uh, tornado activities that we just had. And the fringe benefits in building inspections that go with both of those items, as well as a health plan change uh, selected this year requires an additional $2,327. So most of these are one-time expenses. Okay, we have a motion to uh, approve the and authorize changes to the annual appropriation resolution as contained in item 18. I'll make a motion for item 18. Second. Mr. Ubel? Yes. Mr. Painter? Yes. Mr. Humphrey? Aye. Mr. Eigel? Do we have any additional we items? We have an add-on regarding a resolution for our special session. Right. Judy? A resolution's been prepared and it's recommended to adopt resolution number 03418, resolving to schedule a special session of the Board of County Commissioners on Tuesday, March 13th, 2018 at 7 o'clock p.m. at Claremont Northeastern High School in their cafeteria located at 5327 Hutchinson Road, Batavia, Ohio, 45103, <coughs> to conduct a public informational meeting in order to provide the public a final opportunity to submit comments for consideration by the Board of County Commissioners on the proposed Village of Newtonsville Wastewater Treatment Plant, project number 6402-60117, and collection system, project number 6402-60116, 
project accordingly, pursuant to and in compliance with Section 305.07b and Section 121.22 of the Ohio Revised Code. Do we have a motion to adopt Resolution 34-18? So moved. I'll second the motion. Mr. Painter? Yes. Mr. Ubel? Yes. Mr. Humphrey? Aye. We're at the public participation section of our agenda. During this time, the board does not answer questions or engage in debate. No member of the public may comment about a matter that is not within the purview of the county commissioners. The commissioners are not expected to comment on matters brought to the board during this time. Each speaker shall only speak once and shall be recognized by the president. Uh, is there anyone in the audience that would like to address the board? Mr. Hicks. <clears throat> In accordance with the rules of the board, your comments will be limited to five minutes. Thank you, Commissioner Humphrey. I am Chris Hicks from 444 Woodward Court, Cincinnati, Ohio, 45255. There are four matters that I wish to present to the commissioners and to the audience here and ask for there to be action as quickly as possible. First relates to Mr. Ubel. Mr. Ubel has been implicated in a fifth degree felony election fraud charge associated with his petitions. I've just found out through my attorney that Prosecutor Vince Ferris has announced that he's begun an investigation into this election fraud. At this time, I think for sake of healing and moving our county forward, it's appropriate for Mr. Ubel to resign. I know there are other people, uh, including elected officials that are privately calling for that resignation and I think the time is now. Uh, second thing, second thing I want to hit on is nepotism within our government that's covered by the statute of limitations. Now that we have progress on some important things relating to moving our county forward, I think it's essential that we deal with the next issues that I think are going to come forward relating to nepotism within the government that's still covered under the statute of limitations. I believe the commissioners know that to which I am referring. And I think it's something that we need to get action on. What I would propose is that there should be a review up and down our government in the county to assure that ethics laws are being complied with when it comes to nepotism and other matters of conflict of interest. Final point that I want to hit on is the CVB. On February 14th, I came here to discuss your legal options to get public transparency relating to what happened at the CVB during five years where $3.5 million of our money, taxpayer money, was spent improperly with Chairman Ubel, uh, Commissioner Ubel, Ch Party Chairman Ubel, Commissioner Ubel, Linda Fraley, Chuck Tilbury, and other members of our government, all improperly serving on the CVB as determined by our Secretary of State, Mike DeWine. Now, hold hold uh, on a second. Can, can I ask you a question? And it won't. won't does it go against my time? It won't. No. All right. No. Uh, I'll give you the time. You, you'd said $3.5 million was spent improperly. Mm -hmm. Do you mean that the money was actually spent improperly or do you just mean people served on the board and until such time it's been commissioner painter i appreciate the question it's given that it's been nine months that this has been going on at this point at this point due to the level of secrecy around these records and the continued attempts and the continued wasting of taxpayer money to prevent us the citizens from being able to see what happened during that time period at this point i'm going to assume it was improperly spent I'm going to put the obligation on the. I'm just saying that's a. I'm going to put the obligation. That's a long assumption. I'm going to put the. Well, it's been nine months. I'm going to put the obligation on you. Okay. You and you. Okay. I'm going to put the obligation on you to prove to us by opening those books and showing us the records that it was not improperly spent. Don't. I cannot understand. Don't. Don't let me get you off too far on your. I cannot understand why there has so much resistance and so much willingness to waste taxpayer money to try to hide from the taxpayers. What happened during a five-year period where we're told in the press by our auditor that nothing bad happened? But that same auditor will not call for opening those books. So let me finish my remarks. I appreciate the question. So I, I, I appreciate also Mr. Eigel updated me because I can't figure out from the Convention and Visitors Bureau site who's actually on the board right now, uh, is that there are, you guys have control over five appointments. Five appointments. Right now, those appointments are filled by Jeffrey Sperry, Greg Holman, Mark Simon, Nick Baker, and to me, inexplicably, Chuck Tilbury, who is already subject of an attorney general's opinion and is the campaign treasurer for Linda Fraley. Okay? It's inexplicable that this goes on, and also that the board is headed by now Jim Comadeca, a known business associate of Mr. Ubel. What I call for immediately 
is that you guys use your power and do the same exact thing, Mr. Humphrey and Mr. Yubel, that you did on August 20th, 2012, and replace those five members unless and until they vote to open the books to the citizens so we can know what happened to our money. It's our money. You took control of it. We know you used it for a couple of crony contracts for Chris Smith and Jim Kombadeka in there, and we want to see the rest of it. And the time has come to make that move. You guys could make that move anytime you want. You did it. Mr. Humphrey, you participated in doing it on August 20th, 2012. On August 22nd, 2012, the, at August 22nd, 2012, the CVV met with the new board members and fired the staff and fired the leadership, except for one or two people. Okay? Do it again. What do you have to hide? What do you have to hide? There's a five-year period, $3.5 million. It's our money. And it's, I came politely to talk about this on February 14th, which people can check in the video of the meeting then, and no action has taken place. How much more damage do you guys want to let happen to our county while you refuse to act? I cannot believe that you had appointed, these people were all appointed between September and February of this year. I can't believe, except for Mr. Tilbury, which I can't believe is still on the, on the CVB board, but I can't believe that you appointed people to the board knowing what's going on without obligating those people to citizen transparency. It's absurd. So those are my remarks. You need to take action now. I'd also encourage, again, to find on one concluding point. Mr. Eubel, it's time to resign from the party leadership and as commissioner so that we can begin a healing process in our county. Let's get rid of all the contention so that we can save money for the taxpayers. That's a decision on you. You've never come to this podium and talked and addressed the people. Now, why don't you come to this podium and address the people in a resignation so that we can start moving on in this county and move our county to a place, a better place that I think we all want if we care about the people of Claremont County. Thank you very much, commissioners, for the time. And thank you for the questions, Commissioner Painter. Thanks for your comments. Anyone else? Commissioner Humphrey, a clarification. Uh, attorney Mike DeWine is our attorney general, not our secretary of state. All the money that goes to the Convention Visitors Bureau tax is a transient tax. It's not a tax on our taxpayers here in Claremont County. Unless you're ru renting hotel rooms in the county, uh, in most cases it's uh, from people that are probably 100 miles and further away that uh, pay that tax. It's not a tax on the county citizens, citizenry, citizenry, citizenry itself. So it's, um, it's a transient tax. Anyone else that would like to address the board? If not, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Mr. Hubel? Yes. Mr. Painter? Yes. Mr. Humphrey? Yes. <clears throat> We're adjourned. Thanks for joining us and God bless.